If you want to understand a time-tested way to invest in the bear market, stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm Jasper, a financial market analyst working with Trading212 to help improve your financial education. Please note that nothing in this video should be construed as financial advice. Well, they say the trick to investing is to buy low and sell high. So investing strategies for a bear market should be a cinch, right? Well, not quite. No! No! Firstly, let me remind you what we're talking about here. A bear market is a market in which prices are falling. For our purposes, we're talking about the share prices falling, but it applies to any market from indices like the FTSE 100 to oil to the British pound. This can happen for a number of reasons, but it's basically caused by investor fears about the future. Naturally, when a bear market happens, things that worked in a bull market stop working. To illustrate the point, I'm going to deviate quickly from long-term investing to trading. The archetypal example of what stops working in a bear market is buying the dip. When it's a bull market, stocks overall are rising, so it's not hard to find a stock in an uptrend. Stocks rarely go up in a straight line, so whenever there's a pullback from the main trend, investors can buy the stock on the dip in the anticipation of the next rally. The trouble with the bear market is that the rallies fade too quickly and the dips keep going too long. You can throw this strategy on its head. That's called selling the rip. You can find a stock in a downtrend, which should be the majority of them, where there is a bounce, you sell the stock short in anticipation of the next drop to new lows. But this is a very risky and really isn't appropriate for 99% of investors. Okay, long-term investors, I'm back with you. I got this. Very shortly, I'll present a model for how to invest in the stock market according to the market and business cycle. Now, call me Mr. Positive Thinking, but bear markets have never led to the apocalypse. As bad as things can feel in a bear market when your investments aren't worth as much as they were, especially if the economy is bad too, every bear market in history has been followed by a bull market. So John Tumberton, one of the greatest investors that ever lived said, bull markets are born on pessimism, grow on skepticism, mature on optimism and die on euphoria. He's basically saying the next bull market is born in the bear market. So a bear market is not a time to stop investing because you want to be there early and ready to capitalize on the next bull market. The main way you get through a bear market is by switching from a strategy of capital appreciation to a strategy of capital preservation. But let's not beat around the bush. When stocks are mostly falling, it's harder to make money and it's easier to lose money when you're investing. Let's remind ourselves of Uncle Warren's two most important rules of investing. The first rule of Fight Club is rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. During a bear market, you want to concentrate your efforts on making sure you keep as much of your capital as possible to benefit from the next bull market. To my mind, this means reducing risk in your portfolio. Now you can reduce risk by selling stocks. However, studies have shown that market timing is very difficult, meaning most of us will probably sell out of our stocks at just the wrong time, probably based on emotions rather than a solid rationale. And not only that, probably be too late to buy back into the next bull market. The other way you can reduce risk is by owning stocks in sectors that hold their value, even when times are tough. This inherently will also mean owning more value stocks and less growth stocks. In a previous video, we asked to the question, what is a bear market? And I showed a chart of how investor sentiment changes throughout the bull and bear market. If you haven't seen it, we've added a link in the description for this video. Now I want to introduce a new chart. The concept is known as sector rotation. The idea is that investors rotate between sectors in accordance with the business cycle and bull and bear markets. The red line is the stock market and the green line is the business cycle. The stock market moves ahead of, i.e. anticipation of, the economy. The market cycle can be divided into four stages. A market bottom, when a long-term low is put in. The bull market is when the market rallies off the market bottom. The market top is when the bull market reaches its high point. The bear market is when the market drops drops, but rarely retraces all of its gains in the last bull market. I just want to make this point again. The stock market moves ahead of the economy. So you don't want to invest in what's happening now. You want to invest according to what comes next in the cycle. And of course, there lies the risk with investing. We don't know for sure what comes next. So the goal is to be compensated with investment returns for taking on this risk. All right, so at the top of the chart, you can find the main sectors of the stock market. Each sector has characteristics that are preferred by investors at different stages of the business cycle. But again, being a real parrot here, they do well ahead of the stage of the business cycle starting. So let's go through them. 
full recession. This is a time when businesses are making less money and people are losing jobs. Usually interest rates are falling. It's during this time that the market bottoms as investors rotate into cyclical and transport stocks and into technology and industrials as the market begins the new bull market. Early recovery. Here, industrial production starts to rise and consumer confidence turns around while interest rates have bottomed. Now the stock market is in a new bull market. Industrial stocks continue to fare well at the beginning before investors rotate into basic materials and energy stocks as industries demand more commodities. Full recovery. Here the economy is getting overheated and interest rates start rising. Consumer confidence is high but industrial production is flat. During this period the stock market is topping. Energy should still do well at the start but then investors rotate into more defensive sectors like consumer staples and healthcare. Early recession. Here the economy is starting to look bad. Consumer confidence starts falling as does industrial production. The yield curve might get inverted and investors get even more defensive and shift into utilities and then financials. Now, this is just a model and models by their nature are simplified. It doesn't always work out just as above and there is always disagreement about which stage of the business cycle we're in. So let's get more specific. How do you invest during a bear market? According to the sector rotation model, you rotate more of your portfolio into sectors that hold their value and reduce risk, which are staples, healthcare utilities and perhaps financials. All right, but which stocks in those sectors are here you ask? The stocks that fit into your portfolio and fit your personal financial situation are your business. But one general concept I would like to introduce, which I hope you guys will find useful, is relative strength. Now let's rewind for a second. We're in a bear market. We've looked at the sector rotation model to understand which sectors we might be best invested in. Now we're at the stage of wanting to decide which stocks we would choose within those sectors. One way to help decide is to look at the relative performance of stocks relative to an industry benchmark. If I just pull up the Trading 212 app and I tap the search icon and hit browse all, I can pick a country and then I can see all the sectors. Let's say I choose healthcare as one of the bear market friendly sectors. So randomly, let's choose the stock at the top of the list, Cardinal Health. Now let's note it's one year and three month performance. What I can do now is search for XLV, which I happen to know is the ticker for the Spider US Healthcare Sector ETF. We can then compare the performance of the individual stock with the overall sector. In this case, we can see that the stock has been rising over both time periods, while the overall sector is slightly down. Another way you can visualize this relative strength is with a relative strength chart. I like TradingView for this, and actually the interactive charts on Trading 2 on 2 are by TradingView. I made this chart with TradingView charts. It's Cardinal Health, which has the ticker CAH, divided by XLV. It's almost like a Forex pair, like Euro Dollar. It's one asset priced in terms of the other asset. You can see Cardinal Health has been relatively weaker than the overall healthcare sector over the past few years, but the breakout above a downtrend line demonstrates that more recently, Cardinal Health has done better than the sector it's in. Again, CH and XLV are random examples to demonstrate the idea that a stock outperforming its benchmark in a bear market shows it is holding its value better than the industry average. So let's summarize what we discussed. We said strategies that work well in bull markets don't work as well in bear markets. In bear markets, it's time to switch from capital growth to capital preservation. Sector rotation is a model that can help decide which sectors to invest in during a bear market. And relative strength is a way to pick out strong stocks within a sector. All right, that's me done. What about you investors out there? Is sector rotation a useful idea or a bunch of nonsense? Tell us how you invest in a bear market by writing a comment. And if you like this video, please make sure to smash the like button, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you see more videos like these as soon as they're released. Thank you very much for watching and happy investing.